I don't know if you can hear that, but that's lightning and thunder. Here I am standing in our garage. At least this gives us an opportunity to work on our kitchen, uh, but it's crazy outside. Let me show you what's going on. We have some pretty wicked storms going through the area right now, and uh, I was planning on going out and collecting some rotting wood for the isopods, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen today. So let me tell you a little bit about our isopod enclosures and the importance of rotting wood. The isopod vlog. Hello isopod fans and welcome again to the isopod vlog. In a video I did earlier we talked about setting up a new isopod enclosure. I want to focus on one point specifically today and that's the contents of the enclosure. We've talked about substrate, we've talked about leaves, we've talked about a moist spot in the enclosure, talk about a dry spot in the enclosure, but today we're going to talk about what they gather around, the wood. So why are we talking about the wood today? Well, besides the leaves, the wood is what they actually eat. Not only is it the protection for the isopods in the enclosure, it's also a source for their diet. I've watched a lot of videos this past few months and talked to a lot of isopod keepers, and there's all kinds of different types of materials that people use for the isopods to gather under from cork bark, to egg cartons, to all kinds of different materials. And while these are good materials for them to gather under, it really doesn't add anything for their dietary needs. So you might be asking, if I'm providing leaves and other foods, why do I need anything other than cork bark or egg carton or anything like that? My thought on decaying wood is if you have it available, if you can get it, Go ahead and use it. It certainly doesn't hurt, and I think that it adds a beneficiary element to their diets. So what is decaying wood exactly? Well, today we were planning on going out and collecting some in the wild, but as you saw earlier, it's raining out and we didn't get a chance to do that. So let's go ahead and look at this container. This is Porcelio Scaver Giant Orange. This is our enclosure for these Giant Orange. And as you can see, we have a little hide area under here See if I can zoom in a little bit on that. We have some babies in there. We have plenty of leaves. We have a moist area with, uh, and we're using sphagnum moss. But I also have two pieces of decaying wood and they just absolutely love this. I'll try not to drop any on the floor here. Here's another piece of rotting wood, decaying wood. And I'm gonna put this enclosure down you can see if I took this wood and I chunked it off here, it would just fall apart. This is what they're actually eating in this enclosure besides the leaves. Let's go ahead and take a look at another enclosure. This is Porcelio Hoffman Segai. So as you can see, I do have cork bark in here. Let's see if I can get that piece out. And we have plenty of isopods under the cork bark. But what I've done also is provide a piece of rotting wood, decaying wood. A little lichen on this wood as well. So they're just really enjoying this decaying wood. What is decaying wood? I mentioned before that it's wood that you could just flake off. And I can do that with this wood. It just comes, comes apart in pieces. I mentioned before that you can get decaying wood by collecting it yourself. If you bring this wood home, go ahead and make sure that you bake it at about 350 for a couple of hours to make sure that you kill anything in it and that prepares it for your use in these uh, isopod enclosures. And here's a really important point on collecting the, this type of wood. When you're collecting it, make sure that you're not collecting it in areas that could be treated for weed control or fertilizers or insecticides. So my thought on decaying or rotting wood is that it certainly doesn't hurt. I keep a lot of geckos. A lot of uh, questions right now revolve around whether you should use UVB lights on, on geckos that are nocturnal or not. My thought and a lot of other hobbyists thoughts are to use the UVB because it just simply doesn't hurt. In your isopod enclosures, you should be using these for part of their diet. But my thought is why not use decaying wood in their enclosures as well? I hope these tips helped. Thank you for watching and make sure you hit that like button below. We'll see you next week.